Hey, you're listening to the Sub Club Podcast, a show dedicated to the best practices for building and growing subscription app businesses. We'll share insider secrets from the top subscription apps on the app stores. Let's get into the show. Hello, I'm your host, David Barnard, and with me today, Revenue Cat CEO, Jacob Biding. Our guest today is Cliff Weitzman, the founder and CEO of Speechify. As someone with dyslexia, Cliff built Speechify to help himself learn by having text read aloud. Cliff went on to blitz scale Speechify with an irreverent approach to SaaS norms and a willingness to experiment. On the podcast, we talk with Cliff about the benefits of building for a niche, the one ad that changed things for Speechify, and why Cliff is now hiring comedians. Hey, Cliff, thanks for being on the podcast. I wanted to kick it off with the story of Speechify. I, I know the story, but I don't know that all of our listeners do, and it's, it's a good one. So uh, tell us why you built Speechify. Uh, for sure. David, great to hop on with you. Jacob, great to see you again. Um, happy to share. So I'm originally from Israel. I grew up there. I got to the U.S. when I was 13, and I'm severely dyslexic, which means that first, second, third, fourth grade, uh, I kind of faked my way through school. I was very bad at reading. I finished reading my first book, I think, in eighth grade. Couldn't spell my last name. And my dad essentially, eventually was like, all right, I got five kids. Um, Tyler, who's Cliff's younger brother, started coding when he was nine, taught himself assembly in fifth grade, skipped four and a half years of math at Exeter, and you know, eventually did a master's in AI at Stanford. Alex, my sister, speaks seven languages. And Cliff can't read. So something's got to give here. So eventually my dad ended up reading books to me. And the book I wanted to read the most was Harry Potter. And so he would record himself on a cassette tape and I would just listen to that thing over and over. And when we moved to the US, US um, I learned English by listening to Harry Potter audiobooks 22 times in a row and became obsessed with audiobooks. Um, that means I've been listening to about two audiobooks a week, every week for the last 16 years, about hundred books per year. And I listen fast, as you can tell by my speaking speed. So I'm trying to modulate myself. Um, when I got to college, I found that most of my textbooks of Brown did not have an audiobook. And so I built a text-to-speech tool that would read out everything to me. It could scan physical books with my phone and OCR them and read them. I could, with one tap, import a 100-page PDF and turn it into a two-hour audiobook. Uh, later, we built a Chrome extension that lets you read your emails and Medium, and we created an API. Um, and I built this big followership of moms of other kids like me who have dyslexia. Um, we got the originally for their kids. And I'd fly around the country to different schools that were for people who are nerds, uh, you know, atypical. So people with dyslexia, ADHD, low vision, autism, concussion, anxiety, people who are second language speakers of English. Um, today, that's about 20%, 5% of our user base, 75% uh, are neurotypical people. So doctors, lawyers, accountants, people in the military, executives, people in finance. Um, and it's been a wild ride. What, yeah. frame it like, uh, how long ago was that? Where you were flying around doing these like uh, traveling salesman stuff? Fly flying around, that was like three and a half, four years ago. Um, and, wow. uh, really the, the way it started was I was, uh, so I had the best time as a student in college more than anyone I've ever met. Um, I don't, <laughs> I don't smoke, but I dance harder than anybody else. Um, and I got to do an independent concentration in renewable energy engineering, which is a mix of physics, engineering, and computer science. I did a lot of design classes at RISD. And so I convinced two of my professors to let me stay in college as a visiting scholar, which meant I did not pay tuition. I didn't do homework, but I got to live on campus, be on meal plan and just like <laughs> classes when I felt like it. Um, and I was working on side projects. I built about 36 products when I was a student, everything from 3D printed skateboard breaks to iPhone apps and websites. And that's how I paid for school. And when I graduated above everything else, my thesis was I wanted to be the person that I needed most when I was young. And the thing I really needed when I was little was someone to read my books to me. At the same time, I noticed that there was a huge shift in the application of narrow deep learning algorithms to speech synthesis, optical character recognition, transcription, translation, natural language processing, and recommendation engines. So I pulled that all together into one thing, and I started messaging principles of schools for kids with disabilities. And I went to this one interview, and the guy was like, cool app kid, um, and he was really useful. And he's like, I got to go. I, I'm going to this conference. And I was like, what's the conference? He's like, well, it's the International Dyslexia Association Conference in Florida. And I was like, sounds like I should be there. When is it? And he's like, well, it's tomorrow at 8 a.m. And I was like, cool. So 3 a.m., I book a ticket. Uh, I had no money at the time, so I convinced United to give me a discount of 40% on the phone. Booked the Airbnb nearby the hotel. Um, and then when the keynote speaker finished speaking, I jumped on the stage, uh, grabbed the microphone, and demoed Speechify. And eight schools offered to fly me out to teach their kids how to use Speechify, and that's how everything started. Wait, wait, did you get kicked out of the conference? What happened after that? 
I did not get kicked out of the conference. They like adopted <laughs> me as one of their own. They were like, this is such a cute 21 year old who's like, thinks he's a traveling salesman. Um, and is so open about the fact that he has dyslexia. I actually just got a message two days ago from Ben Powers, who's the principal of one of the biggest, most successful schools for kids with learning differences. And I'm now building an online assessment that will automatically tell you, uh, heuristically, the probability of you having dyslexia or ADHD. And he's been helping me actually figure out some of the components of that. That's fascinating. That's such an amazing story. You know, I think too many app developers don't just think about the like basic marketing principles. Like you went to a conference where your target market was and you spoke to them. <laughs> like, and, and, and that was, and we were talking earlier, like you saying, you know, staying niche early on, you feel like was a really strong point. Tell, tell me more about that and how, how marketing in that niche really helped you grow in those early days. Yeah. So number one, I'm obsessed with text-to-speech. I think it's the coolest technology that's ever been built. I would not be the person that I am today without text-to-speech. There's a book called Shantaram about a guy who is addicted to drugs in Australia. He runs away from prison, like breaks out, goes to, becomes a slum doctor in India. He meets all these you know, drug lords. And he, talk, he gets to know them all. I was like, man, I'm really like a drug lord. Like my core skill set is I'm a really good leader and I do not give up. I just happened to be lucky that audiobooks were a thing when I was a kid. So I became really erudite and I used text to speech to like read all of Aristotle and Wikipedia and all that stuff. Um, and that's why I did well in university. Um, and, you know, that kicked me into, into working on Speechify. Um, and, and from there, you know, I just kept building it. I forget the question. Say it again. <laughs> <laughs> Was it um, staying really niche early on, focused yes. more on dyslexia, really helped yeah. you kind of get traction? Don't yeah. worry. Don't, don't sweat it. I do that like three times a day. So. So, so that it was exactly right. So what was really motivating about staying niche in this regard is in the beginning, I was the core developer. So you'd upload a PDF, it would not work. You try it again, the app would crash. Like it takes like four or five attempts before like a good outcome came out. So if you didn't have dyslexia, you're like, see a guy, see a buddy. Um, but if you had dyslexia, you'd try five times because you're not gonna mm. read the book by yourself. And after the fifth time it works, to this day, 15% of the reviews on the app store are people who say they cried when they downloaded the app because it was so transformative for them. And so I was allowed to produce a more shoddy product because the need that I was serving for that particular cohort was so acute. And mm -hmm. the next eccentric circle outside of dyslexia was ADHD and then low vision and autism and concussion and anxiety and second language learners. And so I realized this. And so when I started marketing Speechify, what I did is I identified five Facebook groups for moms of kids with learning differences, specifically dyslexia. And then I did another five for ADHD. I found the Reddit groups um, and I set a goal that I would post on all of them. And I messaged you know, six of my best friends. And I was like, if I don't post in every single one of these groups by, you know, 10 a.m. on Monday, I have to run 10 miles this weekend. So I, like, <laughs> I had accountability. So I posted and actually it became a problem because Reddit only lets you post up until a certain amount that it thinks you're a bot. So I had to open multiple Reddit accounts to do it. Um, <laughs> and don't worry, none of the, none of the Reddit terms of service police are here today. So you're good. <laughs> and I was like, cool, well, how do I keep engaging them? So I ended up starting writing publicly on the internet, a book about my experience being dyslexic. I write 500 words a day. Um, and it made me, you know, really good at communicating with this cohort. Um, and it's really life transformative for, for all these people. Um, now the telephone was, you know, recorded sound was invented by uh, Edison. People don't know Edison was like 90% deaf. The reason why he was the inventor of the recorded sound is because he could not perceive sound well. So he would have to put his hand on the wood to feel the vibrations. And then he goes, you know what? What if we put a pin on this drum and we see how it oscillates up and down? So the critical invention behind the telephone was invented by a guy who had a disability. And this is actually true for a lot of inventions. They start with someone who's optimizing for a small marginalized group. And at the end of the day, it actually helps everybody. Um, so, you know, over the last five years, AirPods heralded a shift in how people consume information. Same thing for double speed, Netflix and YouTube and, mm. you know, lecture capture over the pandemic. Um, and so people just learn how to listen fast on podcasts, on audiobooks, And so I just focus on that group. And I was like, my number one mission above everything else in life is to be the person that I needed most when I was young. I want to make sure that reading is never a barrier for learning for anyone, no matter if you have dyslexia or ADD, if you grew up in Ghana and there were 50 kids in your third grade class and you didn't get individualized attention, like that should not matter if you want to learn. I'm going to personally go and remove that challenge for you. And then if we can help everybody else, sweet, we'll do that too. 
How did you, how did, so at some point, yeah, you talk about moving out in these concentric circles. At some point you were like, okay, I'm done posting on, you know, folks with special needs like forums. And you're like, okay, like I'm ready to go to like college students or whatever your next, like you said it was ADHD or, but even like beyond that, I mean, Speechify is a product everybody can get value out of, right? If you understand how to use it. Like when did you decide, like, was it like growth driven? Were you just like, okay, it's time to go to the next level? Like there must've been something driving you beyond, because if it was just to help folks, you know, in the same predicament, you would have just stopped there, but you kept going. Right. So like, how did you, you know, decide to like push out and like, what was your motivation? So when I was a student, I got provision, a bunch of different pieces of software to help me with dyslexia. And they all were horrible, like so bad. <laughs> so I was cobbling together my own tools that worked fast, that had better voices, that had all the stuff that I wanted. Um, and I realized pretty quickly that if you want to build something that actually makes an impact, selling to educational institutions is not the way to do it. Um, mm. Now, I feel that we have been blessed to be alive in 2020, where consumer subscription is an acceptable business model, right? And that was mm. allowed for us because Spotify and Netflix educated the consumer that it's okay to pay a subscription for software. Now, actually, they pay for media. In my case, they pay for software, which is amazing because I don't have any cogs mm. for the most part. Um, I think it's just server. So that's great. Um, and I was like, cool. I'm not going to have fun selling to schools. I would lose all my hair. Um, so instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to build a powerful megaphone so everybody will learn about Speechify. And if you happen to have a friend with dyslexia, you will tell them about it. So I'll give you an example. On the car ride on the way here, I got a message from a friend who's like, hey, I just talked to Sarah Blakely, who's the founder of Spanx. She has a, she'd love to meet you because she has some connection to dyslexia. This happens all the time. People could, I had a our call earlier today, you know, hey, Cliff, great to meet you. By the way, I have to ask a favor. My best friend, her daughter was recently diagnosed with dyslexia. Can you hop on a call with her? Absolutely. This is what I'm here for. Um, and so I was like, cool. If I educate everybody that this exists and I also tell my story, they will introduce it to other friends that they have with dyslexia. And that's exactly what happened. Now, how did I do this? I ended up making an email list uh, in Excel, in, in Google Sheets. I wrote a Google Sheets list of the top 100 best performing consumer subscription companies in the world. And I emailed every CEO, every head of growth, um, and then I hopped on Zoom calls with them and I fly to wherever they were in the world in order to work with them. So I, I you know, got to know the founders of Reflectly and Blinkist and Dollar Shave Club and Honey and Audible um, and Grammarly and Whoop um, and, and Neil from Lightrix. And then I literally sat behind them in their office and looked at how they bought Instagram ads. And then I moved to LA where there were a lot of really good e-commerce companies. And then I, I got really good at buying it. Wait, people, people were okay with this? You're just like, hey, I'm just a random internet guy. I want to come sit in your office and watch you, watch you do Instagram ads. You know, it starts with a cold Instagram or Facebook or email being like, hey, okay, I'm flying to Vancouver soon to meet with the founder of Lululemon. I've been messaging this guy for three and a half years. Finally, <laughs> this meeting is happening. But if I read a book about you and I think you're awesome, or I read about you, I, I send like five, six cold messages every single day. So eventually people respond. And I'm like, I'm incessant. You can't get rid of me. And I'm nice, you know? So, um, and if, and if you actually- Apparently, away, you, haven't, you haven't, you know, committed any crimes yet. So like, it's probably, you know, like somebody, it's a, it's a badge of honor if Cliff comes to visit you, right? So, <laughs> so, so, so I try to get them. On, uh, and then I think that the place where I'm good is like, if you get on the call with me, I'm interesting enough that you'll do a second call. <laughs> and if, uh, you just, Cliff, you just blew up my whole hiring, uh, my whole hiring practice. That's how, you know, that's how I recruit. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Same here. Um, and, and the interesting part is like, I read a lot of books, so it doesn't matter what topic you're interested in. I'll go really deep with you. It doesn't need to be speechify. Um, so we'll talk about economics and philosophy and what it doesn't matter. And eventually be like, Hey, you know, where in the world are you? And they'll tell me. And I was like, cool. You want to, you know, hang out on Friday. And they're like, are you going to be in Denmark? And I'll be like, I'll, I'll come to Denmark. So that's what happened with Jacob from Reflectly. I happened to be in Germany at the time. I literally booked a flight and showed up on Sunday and booked a hotel five minutes from his house. And we hung out in Denmark. And he was like, come, come hang out in the office. I was, Sounds good. And I was like, this is your monitor? Yeah. Oh, can I look at your Instagram account? And he's like, sure. Why are you buying this in terms of stories as opposed to doing posts? Oh, I, oh polls convert better. I didn't even think about that. So I just like, I would do this. I'd make friends. Um, and I'm still friends with like, you know, all these people. And, and that's how I learned. And then I moved to LA and I was like, cool, I need to get better at making ads. So who's good at making content for the internet? Influencers. Cool. I made friends with most like really well-followed influencers in LA. Um, and some of them became like, you know, some of my best friends. 
Um, and so I got really good at making content for Speechify, for the internet. And then I built this whole team um, that's really, really good at producing content. Um, so we put out about 120 new pieces of creative per week across Facebook, Instagram, wow. TikTok, and YouTube. And we just do very, very extensive testing of creative. And we just keep succeeding in increasing, increasing, increasing the spend. And there's a very fun, you know, CAC to first payment period. We make sure the CAC is lower than first payment period and the renewals are gravy. Um, and then all these people who download Speechify, who use it as a non-dyslexic user, some of them are dyslexic. Great. For those who don't, tell their dyslexic friends. Is it, is it, a, did you set that as a comp, like as you evolved this, like, you know, I've got an app and I'm going to a conference and jumping on pirating stages uh, to like, I'm going to make this. Cause at some point, you, you know, you raise money, you kind of like, you decided to make this a thing. Did you like sit down and is that still part of your mission? Like when you're onboarding people, you're like, hey, like our mission is to help those who need this. We're going to sell it to people who it helps a little bit so we can really have the, is that like part of your, do you have like a really tight mission statement that you like you share with customers? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the goal is to make sure the reading is never a barrier to learning for anyone. Okay. It doesn't matter who you are. Um, now I personally have a soft spot for you. If you have dyslexia or ADHD, sure. those are my, my challenges, by the way, interestingly enough, the most performing new ad that we have is a song that I wrote about my experience. With dyslexia. <laughs> and that thing's converted. Like I haven't seen that one yet. You got to get me targeted. I want to see these. It's my favorite ads when they come up. <laughs> I'll, 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 I'm happy to show you guys the first, uh, the, the first couple of lines, but like that one's crushing it. Um, if you search read to me on Spotify, read to me speechify is like blowing up right now or search. On I mean, I want to address this because when I first met you a couple of years ago, like you were not a meme. Uh, and since then you've become a <laughs> meme. How, like, did you, like I said, initially you, you weren't in your creative, right? Like you weren't, I mean, the, 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 you, you hadn't crossed that ego line yet, but at yeah. some point you were like, you know what? Cliff's going to be the star here. Like, did you get pushed back on that? Did you feel weird about it? It seems like it's working. Like how, like what was the decision making? <laughs> Tell me that story. So here's the funny part. I'm in like 3% of our ads. Really? I'm like not that many of the ads. But I guess maybe it's the only ones that hit with me because I know you. <laughs> exactly. We we only recently started to focus on brand. So we just hired Grant, who's been phenomenal at driving brand at Speechify. Um, but if you see the Speechify ads, you know, the blue color is consistent, the name Speechify is consistent, what the app does is consistent, but there's no like core, you know, care, except for I happen to be in a lot of the ads and I look funny. Um, so <laughs> what happened was, you know. I learned how to run Instagram ads. I realized that the most important thing is volume. You put out 300 creative, one out of 300 will blow up, but you don't know which one. No one is a genius and can tell you. And if they tell and you- that's just, that's just the algorithm. Like they just, Instagram decides which one is going to be really effective. And when you say blow up, you mean the conversion rate, one that'll actually work. Yeah, 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 exactly. So, um, okay, but it's true for everything. It's true if you're a TikToker or YouTube influencer. It's true if you're optimizing for SEO and you're writing articles, like- no one is a genius and knows which one is going to be the best. Like at a certain point, volume is what matters. And so I was like, cool, I'm just going to hit volume. How I'm going to hit volume, I would exit Gold's Gym in uh, LA where I was living at the time. I'd pull my phone up and like, you know, I'm just exiting Gold's Gym, finish the workout. I listen to my medical textbook with Speechify. Thanks, Speechify. Click the link below to download. And I would just, in every Sunday and Saturday, I would block off an hour and a half to make ads. And I would just generate content. And then, you know, I used to edit it and then I hired an editor and then now we have a team of editors. And then I started hiring, you know, other people to make content with us as well and do better product demos and this and that. Um, now I'm in the process right now of hiring comedians to write ads. <laughs> so the best performing ads for us um, are like seven to 14 second Instagram and Facebook ads used to be that demo the product really well. It's like hook, value prop, value prop, value prop, call to action. On YouTube, it's like me telling stories and me being funny. And so, you know, for those listening, if you come across me, I usually wear a set of red headphones in the ads. Mm -hmm. uh, often I'm <laughs> That's wearing the meme. That's the meme I'm talking about. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I play a character. <laughs> So internally, we call this character. Oh yeah, it's totally a character, Cliff. Definitely not related. To <laughs> uh, we call this character Cruz Silver. So Cruz <laughs> Silver is a hyperbolized version of Cliff. He talks in a much deeper voice. You know, hi, I'm Cliff, founder of Speechify. What is Speechify? Well, you get the stuff you need to read and we read it to you instantly. Yeah, instantly. Um, and he's just like dead stare on the camera the entire time. And, and those convert really well because they're hilarious. 
And a lot of that is either I find an ad that I really like. So I duplicated, this is hilarious. So I was like, what are good ads? One of them is the dollar, sorry, the Old Spice commercial. It's like, yeah. um, you know, I'm on a horse. So I was like, who's got a horse? I posted this to Instagram. Turns out uh, Logan Paul had a horse in his ranch. So I ended up oh, going to Logan's ranch, mounting his horse and shooting <laughs> the Old Spice commercial and it crushed it on YouTube, right? Like it's the more ridiculous, have fun with it. Yeah, I wanted to ask you about one specific ad. So th- yeah. and, and it's hard to tell from the outside, like what actually hit and really drove the business versus maybe there was a different inflection point that happened at the same time. But there was that one ad that was very Dollar Shave Club where you're like in a pool and you walk out and you know, um, and looking at App Annie's download figures, that ad dropped in August 2020, I believe. And and looking at App Annie, that seemed to be, and, and they're not always perfectly accurate, but it seemed to be like a huge inflection point. Was it that ad specifically, or did you actually turn on uh, you know, this, this, the, uh, ad spigot around that time. No, we had been running ads on Facebook and Instagram for a while before that, um, to our iPhone app. That ad was the first ad that worked on YouTube. So very weirdly, uh, that was one okay. of the top 10 ads running on YouTube, driving downloads from mobile apps. The only apps in that category that were not us were gaming apps coming from YouTube. Right. Yeah. Um, then we launched the Chrome extension. The Chrome extension has been by far one of the fastest growing extensions in the history of the Chrome store. Like in the usage on the Chrome extension is like amazing. And you know, it's a, so um, I mentioned Tyler, I think earlier in this uh, podcast, my brother, uh, Tyler's like an actual genius. Like he did his master's in artificial intelligence at Stanford. He gets 103% per assignment. Um, he built an array of exceptionally high quality uh, voices for Speedify, as well as advanced OCR, advanced syncing, you know, Gwyneth Paltrow's voices on the app. So, and and uh, there's NLP that will identify the ads on a page. It'll jump the page, the, the ads. It'll sync the audio. You can dynamically change the speed so you can go up to 700 words per minute, 900 words per minute. Um, so when we released the Chrome extension, then things went bananas because there's very few people who can do performance advertising on, advertising on YouTube because YouTube generally has horrible attribution. But... Mm, YouTube right. is owned by Google and the Chrome store is owned by Google. So attribution is better. So we started sending a ton of people from YouTube ad to the Chrome store, both on desktop. Mm, and then I imagine a lot of that converts into, if they convert and use it, like they'll use the mobile app then too, right? Correct. So, so, so that worked. And there was like a series of other YouTube ads that have worked really, really well around that time. Um, so again, that ad, uh, even if I look at, in terms of our ads, that's like number 20 in terms of like the most views. There's like many, many, hmm. many pieces of content that completely outperform that ad, but that is such a meme. And I play such a character that it shows you, by the way, the difference between direct response marketing, which is like interrupting marketing and brand building. Like th- there's some brand work that is associated with that project. Now, is that the brand you want? I don't know, but we'll see. Did you know, like, like with that kind of ad and that take and like that was going to hit that it was going to become the cliff show? Because I feel like that was the moment it became the cliff show, right? Like it kind of becomes, you become part of the, the marketing, right? You well, become part of the so brand. The, part, the best, again, it's ridiculous. The best, the best, the best, the best converting ad that we had before that was me shirtless in bed saying, <laughs> In medical school, I have to read a lot. So I use this app Speechify to read my textbooks. And then everybody's shitting on me. This guy's clearly not in medical school. Um, you know, <laughs> blah, 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 blah. Oh yeah, you have, you have good haters. Your haters are, I mean, oh, that's why favorite. you're a meme. Like memes get haters. Like that's 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 part of it. I love reading the, I love reading the hate mail underneath. <laughs> yeah, well, the funniest part is, you know, we have a lot of like, you know, very sweet ads about, you know, supporting kids with dyslexia and 50% of the comments are, Millennials are ruining the world. This is so lazy. Like, you know, mm. why are you not reading, et cetera? That's okay. And the funniest part is if you read, you know, hate comments um, and you go consistently to all their stuff is spewing hate, it has nothing to do with you. So every single time yeah. I do this, I don't know if you saw, I did a series of posts about this. I just like come back to them with so much love and you flip them immediately. It just like if you sure. show the it's humble. And then I'll go and like everything on your Instagram page. Um, so it's not a, not a big deal. But, uh, yeah. The, so now the thing that I'm trying to do is figuring out, okay, how do I do this in a like actually intelligent way? Uh, so we have a couple of wins here and there. Um, but again, the, the ads that I'm in are like legitimately less than 5% of the ads that, <laughs> that we run. It's just the most recognizable. 
Interesting. I, I, you mentioned you were like thinking about hiring comedians or like, and it made me think of like how traditionally brands would outsource this, right? Like you'd work with an agency, they would be, and, and you're doing the opposite. You're like the starring in the ads, you're bringing them in. And that seems, I mean, I don't know if, I, I, I don't know, I'm not as well read, maybe I should speechify more, but like, I don't know if this has happened if other companies, because even Apple, like the iconic advertising, right? They, they would work with them, but they use agencies, right? Like, do, do you, are, how do you feel about that? Is, do you feel like that's a strategic angle? Do you feel like this is a shift that like, like brands no. need to own their creative and make it like part of their core thing? So at Speechify, we have like really clear set values. So the top four values in the company are extreme product quality speed, leading with love and frugality. So as a result of frugality, we do not like agencies to begin with. We love hiring internally. So we're about hundred people at Speechify now, all in all, wow. about 70 engineers. Uh, we have the Android team, the iPhone team, uh, the backend platform slash API team, the web slash Chrome team and the AI team. I have sat at the helm of every department at a different point in time. So I was the first developer. Um, and then we got to the point where like, I suck. You know, I too was ranked number three in robotics in India, the con- like in, in high school, got a full ride to Brown, did 17 citations in AI research as a sophomore, uh, was a CTO of a YC company as a senior at Brown, graduated, became CEO of that company, scaled to 100 people, sold it, joined Speechify the lead product. Simon was ranked number one in math in Bulgaria in high school. He wrote a textbook on neural networks. He came and started off as, you know, head of iOS, then he became head of engineering. Now he leads operations recruiting. Rajiv led a hundred person engineering organization at Amazon reporting to the CFO. Uh, Rahil and our team, similar. Um, Anson was the smartest math guy two years ahead of me at Brown, uh, worked for the NSA, then he worked for Palantir, then he was the CTO of a YC company called Trade, became CEO of Trade, finally joined Speechify. Like, I'm not allowed to touch the code base at this point. But at a certain <laughs> point, I led the software. Team. I'm not allowed either, but it's for other reasons. <laughs> <laughs> um, then I led product, then I led design, then I led recruiting. Um, and so the thing that I do is I love to jump in the deep end of the pool. I will read literally every book there is about the topic and I will talk to every expert who has done it themselves. And then I'll rewrite the playbook altogether. Um, My philosophy is a CEO, sorry, a founder, your number one job is to learn how to code, how to design, how to talk to users, how to do all that stuff, how to market. Uh, A CEO has three roles. You know, is there cash in the bank? Are the right people sitting in the right seats? And what's the overall uh, long-term vision? So I spend a lot of time in vision and I've spent the majority of my time in hiring. A small amount of my time goes towards marketing and recently mm-hmm. brand. So marketing, I went, I figured out how to do it in terms of Facebook, Instagram, um, you know, YouTube. And like one of the people who I keep trying to get on the phone is the CEO of TikTok for North America. And so I've gotten everybody underneath him and I've gotten like three of those. So I'll, I'll get the call. I'll figure it out. We're going to dominate TikTok. If you're time. listening, CEO of TikTok, you got a fan. <laughs> Let's talk to you. No, seriously. Because again, it's, they're so good. Um, but you know, the API that we've now built, you know, it was going to eclipse everything in terms of what we do in terms of performance. Um, but, uh, and I've interviewed hundreds of people to come into Speechify to lead marketing. I just have yet to find someone who I think is sophisticated enough about understanding both the math and the creative. So some people mm-hmm. understand the creative, but they don't understand ROI and CAC. And some people understand ROI and CAC, but they're not creative. I mean, it certainly feels like when I think about like, you guys turn text into speech, like every computer has this built in, right? Like, I mean, you do it the best, like obviously, right? But like marketing that, that's a little bit of the magic, right? Like that's a little bit of like explaining, you're, you've, you're you, like, you, I, I think you said it, you said it at the beginning of the call. And I think it kind of just, it's a pass by statement that text to speech is one of the most amazing technologies ever. And you're like, my computer could do it in 1995. But when you stop and you think about it, you're like, no, that's actually true. Right. And like, you're actually bringing that to mass market. Right. It makes sense. But it's, it's, it's interesting that you're keeping it internally. Right. And I think that's actually an advantage. And I think that's actually a theme we've talked about enough, a number of times on this show, because B2C is so hard, because like churn rates are so high, like you can't, you're not going to get you're, you need to have like a content advantage or like a brand advantage or like something, right? And like, I think just outsourcing that to somebody to tell me like, make ads for me, like, I don't think it's gonna work, you know? Yeah, and again, we're just very frugal. Like, I'm not gonna pay a margin of ads to uh, agency. Now, here's the thing. So I have a YouTube channel, right? Even that is in-house. You know, we have a stable of really strong editors who do all the editing. So I shoot with, you know, a teammate for two hours on a Sunday, that's the video for the week and it gets shot instead of you know hiring an external agency. Like, God forbid we hire an external engineer as an agency, like Simon <laughs> would murder me in my sleep. Um, and he's, he'd be right to do that. Um, now in terms of marketing, the, the landscape ultra changes so fast. TikTok wasn't a thing that people consumed information on two and a half years ago. Yeah. And now it, 
all the usage on Instagram has dropped, right? You know, um, I did not think that we could find ROI on Facebook because so many people had already advertised on Facebook, but then they honed their algorithm better, right? There's so much stuff going on in lifecycle and push, like you got to be on the front edge and that's where you find arbitrage. So yeah. that's important to know. Now with comedians, yeah, you know what I'm doing for that? That I'm not even hiring classic comedians. I'm finding. I'm just going to. I'm going to uh, Jerry uh, Seinfeld's house. I'm going to sit outside until he comes out, and I can talk to him. <laughs> no. Oh well, that too. So Jerry Seinfeld's wife uh, just did her. Uh, I think it was master's in psychology, and she listened to the entire thing with Gwyneth Paltrow's voice on Speechify. <laughs> See, I guessed it. I guessed it. Uh, right and same thing with Larry David. Uh, I really. You're only. Really you're only a phone call away. You're only a phone call away. Well, Actually, but, like while we're talking about it, I thought the Larry, Larry David did a crypto thing for for. Um, so that I thought it was really good. Yeah, <laughs> like I care less about the product, but like this I thought you're getting that ad too. Yeah, yeah, you should think about it. But the nice it. Stuff part about that ad is that there's so much existing brand behind the Larry David character that it works. There's no yeah, exactly yeah, yeah, yeah. brand behind the cruise silver. Uh, no, it'd be harder to pull off. Yeah. Uh, but what I'm doing now is finding people who have crushed it on TikTok, mm. making fun TikToks and hiring those people to help me come up with the content for the new ads. Because, hey, mm. I'm funny, but I'm not the funniest person in the room. Let me find the funniest people. And, and well, and, and, and t- t- taste will change, right? Like you're not going to be able to be on the, on the, you know, even that old spice ad, like that's going to eventually, who, what is this? This, you know, that's like the was up commercials right. from the nineties, right? Like it's just gonna eventually going to gonna ride the trends too, which is something that historically yeah. I've not been a fan of because, you know, I don't read news. I read like history books. Like that's what I'm a nerd mm. about. Um, so I'm never like most up to date about the news and like I could care less. Um, but what is culturally relevant is important. So for example, who's the most talked about person right now in this moment, the celebrity? Uh, it's uh definite, I was, I was going to make a joke with Will Smith right now. Like, okay, right? <laughs> right, so we're going to come out with a, with a voice, right? So you got to oh, find. Oh, okay. There you go. Right. Yeah. If you can, yeah, get a Bill Smith. Uh, do you, I was going to ask you, you mentioned this YouTube thing that you've been working on and I've seen these on, you share them on LinkedIn and stuff. It's a bit of a different tack. You're kind of building some content that's around like, the leadership, thought leadership, CEO leadership stuff. That's like not necessarily directly around selling uh, Speechify. I mean, without, without piercing the veil, without ruining the, the cliff show, like what is, what is your intent with that? Like, why was that exciting oh, for you? And like, why was that something you decided to do? Yeah. So, um, when I was a senior in college, I wrote a 30 page paper about my worldviews. And the conclusion to that paper was that there's like a huge conclusion actually about dyslexia, but I broke it down into the 18 principles that I lived my life by that are different than most other people's. Um, and then I also kind of honed in on like my three top goals in life, which had iterated and developed over time. And they were number one, be the best dad that I could possibly be to my kids in the future and have kids who are greater than me. Number two was maximize the love in my life, whether it be a uh, partner, you know, my girlfriend, um, family, et cetera. Um, and the last one was create as much value as possible in the world and elevate the collective quality of life in the short term by building tech companies and in the long term by doing more mentorship. So I'm the oldest of five kids. Um, and you know, I love being an older brother. Um, and so I wanted to scale that a little bit more. So that's something I've always been into, even in college, you know, the reason speech of I took off is I made YouTube videos about how to use text to speech that got hundreds of thousands of views. Mm-hmm. I put them on just because I wanted people to know. And then I lean into, you know, company building because 90% of my job today is hiring. So it's great because a potential engineer, it's basically every single person who comes on a call with me has already binge watched the YouTube channel. Yep. And so it's like, this is as if it's our third call. Right. So, that so that's the cool. benefit. I mean, not to make everything about quick pro quo, but like when your time is very valuable and constrained, like everything you do kind of has to have, like it has to be, you know, sometimes it can just be fun, but like it's best if it's also serving. And I wondered, is it about hiring, right? And it's probably even good for, you know, execs all the way up and down the oh, stack, yeah. I would imagine Absolutely. Um, for, for generating and generating stuff like that. So. Yeah, speaking of hiring, we uh, we do need to wrap up, um, and uh, I believe you have a few positions uh, you're looking to fill. You want to tell us a little bit about that and oh, yeah, what absolutely. you're looking for at Speechify? Um, so we just hired uh, a PM for uh, mobile monetization, but uh, there's a lot of work to be done there. So um, here's how we look at things at Speechify. We do not care about your background. So if you worked at Facebook or Google, if you went to Harvard or Stanford, I could not care less. What I care about is that you learn really fast, you have fire in the belly for the product and high loyalty to the team. We love hiring entrepreneurs, so people who have already built their own things. So for example, if you come into the product team at Speechify, you have to have built something that's used by at least a million people and you move that important KPI at least 1%. 
Ideally, it's install the trial or trial or pay. Um, if it's retention, then you're a god and come talk to me immediately. Uh, <laughs> and then if you're, yeah, and if you're and if you're a uh, an engineer, you know, be someone who's fast um, and and can learn quick. So we're constantly hiring for engineers on iOS, Android, web. Um, our stack is TypeScript, mainly for web. But really, we're hiring for, for all positions. And so if you're someone who fits that mold and you think uh, AI and text to speech are cool, uh, cliff at speechify.com. Send me a message. How, how, I mean, you mentioned, you said you're about 70 people now, like 70 engineers, we're like 70 100. engineers, hundred people. What's your goal? Like, are you trying to, what's your goal to, how big are you guys planning to grow in the next year? Um, we will probably scale to 250. Wow. The, the scale of the goal is not to be that size. The goal is to hit our OKRs. Uh, right. Sure. Frugality and all that. Right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, but um, look, so Tyler just joined the team. We're probably going to staff about 10 other, you know, machine learning um, engineers underneath Tyler. The growth team really needs some more sauce. Um, I'm looking for more product designers as well. Um, again, anyone who's like a great editor who has success with performance marketing, I will hire in a, in a heartbeat. Um, if they have the track record of getting good CAC, um, again, that stuff's really hard. And then we hired just a lot of leadership recently um, across B2B and enterprise, um, across the API, across internationalization, localization, et cetera. Um, so yeah, it's every, every position we're looking for people. That's awesome. That's awesome. And y'all are fully remote as well, right? Yeah, we're fully remote. So we've got folks who work for Speedify in 25 different countries. Wow. Wow. You got us beat. That's for sure. Dang. That's awesome. <laughs> that's so great. I love it. I mean, I think, you know, and you just to like, to back that up, I think like, of all the like consumer products I see out there, like some, some, some of them have legs, some, some have figured it out. I think you guys have one of the ones that have a huge opportunity. Like, I think it's all straight ahead of you. I think your culture has to be, I'm a, you know, every culture is a reflection of their founder. And if, like, <laughs> if you liked hearing from Cliff, you can probably imagine what work in there is like, and it's, if that's right for you, I can imagine it's a great opportunity. Like I would, I would love to, I would love to see what, what, it, what it's like a day in the shoes at, at Speechify. So, um, hopefully we can help you out. By far the stupidest person in the company. Like <laughs> that's, that's the goal. Star. That's the goal. <laughs> so yeah, download the iOS app for Speechify, download the Chrome extension, shoot me an email, check us out on YouTube, Cliff Weitzman, uh, medium and Instagram as well at Cliff Weitzman. Um, and also if you have a mobile app, use revenue cat. You know, <laughs> that has completely changed my life. I used to do this manually. I can't believe I had to do that. Um, Apple's subscription internal API is atrocious. There's nothing better for you. So install Revenue Cat immediately. We're just happy to be along for the ride. That's all. So <laughs> thank you so much, Cliff. Yeah, thanks for being on the show, Cliff. Yeah, guys. Thanks again. To make sure you never miss an episode, subscribe to the show in your favorite podcast player. Thanks so much for listening. Until next time. 